I fought Tim Sterling for the UFC title, and I would love to have that fight over. And the only, the fight I think about probably as much as that fight is my fight with Fedor. And like I was saying, I, ironically, the, the two fights I think about most of my life are fights, big fights, and fights that I lost. So um, the reason I was out of the UFC um, it's because we asked to get out. You know, me and my manager at American Top Team say, hey, look, we just got an offer to fight Fedor and Malenko in Pride. And the UFC's like, okay, we'll, we'll let you. Because, look, I just lost to Tim Sylvia. That's their champion. And it wasn't an exciting fight at all. And so the UFC's like, okay, we have a guy who couldn't beat our champion or didn't beat our champion. So if he goes and beats Fedor, and this guy's... You know, danger. Jeff, Jeff Munson's got submit. I mean, he could get the guy on the ground and submit him. You know what I mean? Um, but if he loses, we didn't lose much because, like, he didn't he didn't beat our champion, and everyone thinks Fedora's the best, and he didn't beat Tim Sylvia. So, okay, everyone expected Fedora to win. If he beats Fedora, then we have a real big thing because it's like the guy who didn't beat our champion at the UFC just went out and beat Fedor, who everyone thinks he's the best in the world. So the UFC was very happy to say, go fight him. Um, unfortunately, the event never happened, the fight didn't happen, and it all it was lost. So anyway, so now I'm out of the UFC, I didn't get to fight Fedor, who I'd wanted to fight for a long time, and now I'm going to fight you know, a different promotion. I did get a pride fight, um, and I did fight some other pretty big fights and, and, and nice fights, um, but the Fedor fight never happened. And a couple years later, um, I get a call from Monty Cox. He's like, look, you, this is for real. Um, M1, the biggest promotion in, in Russia and in Europe, like, they want you to fight Fedor. Fedor had lost a couple. You know, it never lost like 34 0, then it lost like two or three, and then had won a couple back. And, and this is going to be his final fight. They want him to have like a final fight in Russia. It's going to be in St. Petersburg. Um, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, is going to be there. All these celebrities. I mean, it's like, it's not just the fight, it's like an event. And they want basically an established name for him, but they don't want just to go beat up someone. They want like, someone with a reputation or, you know, a good name that that's going to put up a good fight. You know, they don't want it just to beat some nobody because then you know, a lot of people are going to go, uh, what is that? So I go to Russia for the first time and do all the promotion, do the, the thing a couple months ahead of time. And actually on the way home from Russia, I, I had a fight in um, Switzerland. <laughs> so I did this fight in Switzerland and won that fight, then went home to the United States. And M1 wasn't very happy that I had done the fight and tell them about it, but I won, so they were forgiving. Um, so then I trained hard for Fedora, and, and um, during this time, I was like, you know what? I was working with the coach, and I go, I want to, I want to, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't want to stand up with this guy much, but I, let's fight uh, left hand, let's fight southpaw. That way, it can easier to get in. And I'd always thought I'd be a great match for Fedora, because. Um, he comes forward and just comes and swings like this, head hunting. And I've seen him get taken down a couple times. You know, I've seen him be on his back before. And um, he's got, you know, that Sambo, he's been Sambo world champion. And I know he's got some arm bars and stuff like that, but you know, no, I'm not getting an arm bar, you know, especially like take a guy down and pass his guard. I'm not gonna get arm bar. I'm thinking this guy's gonna come at me, throwing punches, I'm gonna have my hands up and I'm gonna fight left-handed so I have one step in already and I'm gonna take him down and I'm gonna get on top of him and I'm gonna be on top of Fedor and I have a good chance to submit this guy. The, the press conference for the fight was this big deal um, and it was at maybe two o'clock and it was the day before, it was the weigh-in and press conference and I had, I had set up, like as soon as I got this fight, all these communists and anarchists from Russia start emailing me um, and, and going to my, my website and saying, is it you, Jeff Munson, we need to get caught, we want you to do this seminar for anarchists and communists and da da da. So like I was, you know, like I said, politics like, means more to me than, than, than the competition. I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I'd love to do it. So the morning of, you know, I was supposed to be at this press conference at two, you know, me and Fedor, the weigh-in, all this stuff, and like at 10, 
I'm doing this. I go get picked up from my hotel, um, go do this this seminar for these anarchist stuff. And of course, you know, we take pictures and there we have like a hundred people there. It's it's crazy and I, I love it. Um, and I'm I get to the press conference at three. I've missed the press conference. Everybody's pissed off. Um, and, and you look at that, it's kind of funny because when you watch the video of it, um, you know, Fedor doing the weigh in and then you know, the press conference, and they have a bottle of water like where I was supposed to be. So, you know, Jeff Munson, and they have a bottle of water like standing, sitting where, where I was, you know. And uh, so it wasn't funny at the time. They were pretty upset. But I go fight him the next day, and uh, I, you know, I go out, you know, introduce me, and I come out to the thing, and then he comes out. I remember, like, you don't pay too much attention to when people come out to, you know, what music or all this stuff, but man, it was, it was an event. They had dancers, they had people in black robes and masks, and, you know, the, the music, and it was so much out of, like, um, Rocky IV when he was fighting Ivan Drago, and it, and just like, that image was in my mind when he came out to the, the music and the, the the smoke and the, you know, all the, you know, because Putin was there and all the, you know, people in the government were, you know, standing up and stuff. And it just like, this, this is like Rocky IV. <laughs> so he comes out and we shake hands and, and just, man, so everything in the fight went exactly the opposite of how I, how I hoped or anticipated or wanted it to go. He stood up the whole time and, and you know, I fought left-handed and he battered me. He knocked me down probably two or three times during the fight with punches. Um, he kicked me, he broke my leg in the second round with kicks. Um, and I just kept my distance, you know, I, I never went for the takedown. When I, you know, I expected him so much to come in and be aggressive and he played the perfect game. He, he kept that distance here and punch, kick, back up, punch, kick, back up, punch, 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 boom, boom. And the times he knocked me down, he, he started on top and started whack, and I'd come here for the underhook, going for the leg, going for that sweep, and he just backed out and said, nope, we're not going, we're not playing on the bottom at all. The match ended with basically me being battered for three rounds, and um, you know, cut my lip open, broke my leg. I remember, you know, it's like, it, we had a lot of respect for another. We, sh we, you know, we hugged in the middle of the ring, and as I was walking, um, then we went back, you know, I shook his corner's hand, they raised his hand, and as I was walking back to my corner, like, I was like, oh, my, my legs, something's wrong. And uh, so that was the last step I took for like six weeks. But after the fight, you know, Fedor came in the back room, he, he, sh he, uh, he hugged me, they took a photo of it, of him hugging me. And um, that picture, and the fact the interview the next day, um, and, and Putin actually called me in my room, like Vladimir, you know, there, no, I wasn't answering the phone, I wasn't at the phone, and security came, knocked on the door, and my, my roommate, my corner answered and said, you need to answer the phone, because security's calling you. I'm saying, well, just have a problem. He goes, no, national security. So they called and they go, hey, here's Vladimir Putin, President Putin, so I talked to him, and um, when we talked, it was, it was um, good, you know, he said, hey, look, you know, we, we appreciate you having here in Russia. You know, the Russian people, we respect you. I respect you for um, putting up a good fight and not, um, you know, giving up when, you know, like you were getting battered. And um, yeah, it meant a lot. I mean, this is, you know, a very you know, important person in the Russia and the world. Um, it was nice. And, you know, the, the more of the fact that he had the intent, he, he actually called. He made it, like, made a phone call. He like. Really, nobody knew he called. Like, I, I tell people he called me, and you know, not the security people know, my roommates know he called me, but this isn't a thing that brought him publicity, that, that was put out into the press, that um, made him more popular, you know? Like, why, why did he go to that event anyway? I mean, I think a lot, he does like MMA, that's definitely a fact, but he also went there because the election was coming up, and it was good for him to be seen, because this was 17 million people saw that live on Russian national TV on channel one or two, or two I think. Um, and so that was good for him, but the next day, when I'm in my hotel room, nobody, it wasn't gonna help him get one vote to have him call me up. So I, I respect the fact he did that. Um, facing Fedor, um, 
you know, people asked him before, I remember years and years before, I think this was in Japan, I met him, and, and my coach at the time said, you know what makes him so good? Is that he never gets stressed out over a fight. He never gets, like, you know how you go out there and fight and you're at a, you think you're 100%, but you're really 80% because 20% is gone in anxiety and nerves and anxiousness and you, you, that makes you tired. And so you really got 80% against how much percent he's got because he's doing the same thing, nerves and anxious and all this. So it's who, you know, if you have two equal guys, it's who can control the nerves better that can, you know, win. But they said about him is he goes 100% and he doesn't get nervous and it doesn't get stressed out and he never loses that 20%. So he, you got him 100% at whatever percent you are and he's probably better than you anyway. So that's why he's, he's beating everybody up already. So and like, I have that in my mind and that, that is something like, this guy's gonna go, this guy's not gonna lose anything by being nervous and I think he's got no reason to be nervous. He's got this whole country in his corner and he's got all the momentum and he's got all this stuff. So, you know, I did think of that and I, um, you know, but I was in good shape and I went hard. It's just one of those things where I, technicality, it wasn't my best fight. You know, heart, it was a good fight. Like, technical-wise and what I had to do, it wasn't the best, but um, he, he was a good guy. I mean, like afterwards, he, he spoke to me. Like I said, he came in. He didn't have to come in the, in the locker room afterwards. And, um, you know, I, that's the thing about fighting. You, get, you have a lot of respect for one another, especially with someone like, like just bust the balls and gives everything to try to beat you. And you do the same trying to beat them. And remember, no matter what the outcome is, of course you're gonna be happy if you win, but you, you're gonna respect the other guy for putting that much, not only effort trying to beat you, but like the, all the preparation he had to do to get to that point, to be in that ring or that cage with you, to try to beat you and put that much effort in where it was a really good contest.